Tonight we look at the path to 270, the number of electoral votes necessary to win the Electoral College and the presidency. America's Newsroom co-anchor Bill Hammer, who Bill will be on the billboard on election night, charts the path with the help of our brand new augmented reality feature. Thanks and good evening. And this is what we believe the state of play is. Everything you see in yellow behind me, we believe is a toss up. That Iowa poll from Saturday night notwithstanding, we still believe Nevada and Arizona and the, and the Southwest, Georgia and North Carolina and the Southeast, and then all these blue wall states, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania are up for grabs. <clears throat> for the sake of this exercise, we believe in Nebraska. All right, that one district, that one electoral vote, right now is still leaning toward the blue team. So we're gonna go ahead and give Kamala Harris 226 electoral votes to Donald Trump's 219, you know where you need to get to 270. So let's look at the path to 270. And under this scenario, what you're gonna see here is the same numbers over there, right? You got Harris at 226 and Trump at 219. Now, you can slice this a hundred different ways, but just for the purposes of this moment here, based on some of the polling and the early turnout in places like Georgia and the Peach State, we believe the 16 electoral votes in all likelihood will go to Trump come Tuesday. We also believe, based on some of the polling and the early votes and really the history in the Tar Heel State, we believe North Carolina will also go for the Trump team. But what happens in that upper Midwest? What happens in that blue wall? Well, they voted together just about every time going back 40 years. So maybe Michigan's 15 electoral votes isn't just right for the picking right now, and it stays with the Democrats and Kamala Harris. And likewise, if they're going to vote the same way, maybe Wisconsin does as well. So right now we're at 251 Harris, 251 Trump. So Pennsylvania's got a lot of mail-in ballots. We believe it's going to be a late night in Pennsylvania regardless, maybe into Wednesday even. So in the Southwest, we've been watching the polling in Arizona, watching the early vote as well, and we see some Republican strength out there. So I'll go ahead and give Arizona uh, to Trump. And that brings us to Nevada. Similar story, early vote's been very strong for the Republicans. Democrats, they, they've got time to catch up. But for now, let's go ahead and give Nevada six electoral votes to Team Trump. And that leaves this one right here. This is the Keystone State of Pennsylvania, 19 electoral votes. And under this scenario, however it comes down, would we'll determine the next president of the United States. For Kamala Harris, she would effectively run the table perfectly, right? Upper Midwest, Blue Wall, Nebraska Congressional District 2. But maybe it doesn't go that way. Maybe we're in for a lot of surprises on Tuesday night. Maybe there are states out there that not, are, are not even on this graphic here, okay? They could come into play, and we're not saying they won't, but right now this is what we're dealing with based on the battleground states behind me there you saw on the map. Maybe Pennsylvania in 2016 was right for Trump, and maybe it's right for him again. And under this scenario, Donald Trump would go back to the Oval Office. Now let's go ahead and clear this and come back over to the map and show you yet again. This is where we believe, and I'll go ahead and take Nebraska 2 off for the moment, but this is what we believe we'll be looking at with a high concentration come 48 hours from now on election night. We shall see. Brett? We shall see. A lot of what if. I don't know why we have to parse everything that this guy says so sternly. She's a radical war hawk. Let's put her with a rifle standing there with nine barrels shooting at her, okay? Let's see how she feels about it. You know, when the guns are trained on her face. <laughs> what the f***? <laughs> That's a Cheney. What are you doing with a Cheney? That's not fun, loving, and mischievous. That sounded quite threatening. Yeah. That's actually worthy of some real examination. And all the Republicans who have talked about having fun at Trump's rallies, I'm sure they'd express concerns about this type of rhetoric. Liz Cheney this morning saying this, quote, in response, this is how dictators destroy free nations. They threaten those who speak against them with death. Political opponents and in great detail, in great detail, suggested rifles should be trained on former Representative Liz Cheney. This must be disqualifying. Anyone who wants to be president of the United States who uses that kind of violent rhetoric 
is clearly disqualified and unqualified to be president. Representative Cheney is a true patriot who has shown extraordinary courage in putting country above party. Trump is increasingly, however, someone who considers his political opponents the enemy, is permanently out for revenge, and is increasingly unstable and unhinged. His enemies list has grown longer, his rhetoric has grown more extreme, and he is even less focused than before on the needs and the concerns and the challenges facing the American people is gone. But your dishonor will remain. Let's see how she feels when the guns are trained on her face. Let's sit with that for a moment. Of course, violent rhetoric, it's not new for Trump, but this stark imagery represents an escalation at a tense moment when the country is on edge heading into Tuesday, with seven in 10 Americans saying they feel anxious or frustrated about the election, according to a new AP poll. And it comes after Trump has raised the specter of using the U.S. military on Americans he calls the enemy within. I think the bigger problem is the enemy from within, not even the people that have come in and destroying our country. By the way, totally destroying our country. The towns, the villages, they're being inundated. But I don't think they're the problem in terms of election day. I think the bigger problem are the people from within. We have some very bad people. We have some sick people, radical left lunatics. It should be very easily handled by, if necessary. These are comments like that, the repeated talk of the enemy within, from within, that have marked Trump's in entire pre candidacy of late. An NPR analysis found that Donald Trump has made more than 100 threats since 2022 to go after his perceived enemies. It's also the focus of a New York Times opinion piece by prominent conservative legal scholar, retired federal appeals court judge Michael Ludig. He says this in the opinion piece, there could be no higher duty of American citizens than to decisively repudiate a man who betrayed the nation when he was previously entrusted with the highest office in the land and now threatens the persecution of American citizens who have crossed him. In the almost 250 years since the founding of the nation, no president before Donald Trump has ever so betrayed America. Four days left until Election Day, Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Trump working late into the night trying to mobilize voters in the West. Harris slamming Trump in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is someone who is increasingly unstable, obsessed with revenge, consumed with grievance. Trump earlier in Henderson, Nevada, saying Robert F. Kennedy Jr., a vaccine skeptic, will oversee women's health if he wins. He's going to work on health and women's health and all of the different reasons because we're not really a wealthy or a healthy country. Harris responding on X writing, no. Harris had a rally in Reno, Nevada, reacting to Trump saying he will protect women whether they like it or not. But Trump isn't giving up. He made another pitch to women last night in a way that wasn't creepy at all. My people told me about four weeks ago, I was saying, no, I want to protect the people. I want to protect the women of our country. I want to protect the women. Sir, please don't say that. Why? They said, we think it's, we think it's very inappropriate for you to say. I said, why? I said, well, I'm going to do it whether the women like it or not. I'm going to protect them. You know there's a name for when you take care of a woman who doesn't want you to take care of her. Uh, it's called kidnapping. <laughs> and there is no situation where whether you like it or not is a good sales pitch. <laughs> Unlimited shrimp, whether you like it or not, would be a pass from me. So Trump's reaching out to women as successfully as he reached out to that garbage truck door. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kamala supporter. This is someone who simply does not respect the freedom of women or the intelligence of women to make decisions about their own lives. Trump on the attack, pouncing on this comment made by billionaire Mark Cuban on The View. Donald Trump, you never see him around strong, intelligent women, ever. It's just that simple. They're intimidating to him. He doesn't, he doesn't like to, to be challenged by them. Trump posting, he is very wrong. I surround myself with the strongest of women with the understanding that all women are great, whether strong or not strong. 
More than 65 million Americans have already voted. Across the country, data shows women outpacing men in early voting, 54 to 44 percent. This is what gets us to the ultimate problem, which is this. Is any of the shit Trump says real? How are we supposed to understand what's bullshit and what isn't? Kamala Harris, she's got to have an 80-page presentation on exactly how this opportunity economy is going to function and how it's going to be paid for. Meanwhile, the standard... 